Okay. So, good afternoon, everyone. And uh, thanks for joining us uh, in this first uh, event of the webinar cycle, Materializing Modernity, Landscape, Architecture, and Anthropology Intersections in 20th Century Rurality. My name is uh, Federica Pompeiano, and uh, I am uh, a Marie Curie researcher at the Institute of Cultural Anthropology and Art Studies in Tirana, in Albania, where uh, I am developing uh, an EU-funded research project called um, MAMU, <laughs> Materializing Modernity, Socialist and Post-Socialist Rural Legacy in Contemporary Albania. Um, before uh, starting with uh, this afternoon presentation, I do have to pay some tribute to my host institutions, both uh, in Albania and in Italy, and especially I am grateful to my supervisors, um, Professor Nicola Scaldaferri, Professor Nebi Bardoshi, and Dr. Olsi Lelai for their support in organizing this event. So thank you to all of you. Um, not least, uh, let me also thank uh, uh, the Ethnomusicology and Visual Anthropology Lab, and the Department of Cultural and Environmental uh, Heritage of the State University in Milano for providing the means for the implementation of this uh, webinar. So uh, let me share my screen. And I hope... I don't know why, but I cannot. I hope you can see my, my slides. So uh, as you might uh, have noticed and uh, read, uh, uh, this webinar is organized within the context of uh, MAMO EU funded Marie Curie project. So let me say a few words uh, on it too, before introducing the webinar cycle. Um, MAMO is a research project that has been funded by the European Union under the Horizon 2020 Research and Innovation Program. And especially it has received funding under the Marie Curie Action Research Program, which support researcher uh, of any nationality and age in working abroad and by means of cross-border and cross-sector mobility. Um, as you can see in this slide, uh, of course, the beneficiaries are the Academia Studium Verbanologiche uh, and the Institute uh, um, of Cultural Anthropology and Art Studies in Tirana. And uh, the project foreseen two period um, of second mand in two different institutions, one in Milano and another second period uh, in Sweden at the University of Gothenburg. And um, as you can see also, <laughs> me and my supervisors are the principal investigators of this, uh, of this project. But um, let's say a little bit more about, um, about MAMO. So uh, MAMO uh, will be developed uh, uh, in two years of research, and during which I will focus uh, on socialist rural architecture and landscape and the post-socialist legacy in an, uh, the Albanian countryside. And the project will move across uh, four main multifold objectives, uh, which are investigating how the communist the communist ideology materialized in the countryside through urban and architectural planning. And uh, in this sense, uh, uh, MAMO will target uh, uh, socialist rural development policies and schemes and how they manifested on the existing rural uh, settlement and landscape. Then uh, uh, I will try to document the post-socialist physical impact on socialist rural legacy and vice versa. And in this sense, uh, the project will analyze uh, the current condition of the former agricultural uh, cooperatives and state farm settlements and how they relate with the compelling informal post-socialist transformations. Um, moreover, um, the project will develop a reflective and integrated approach to socialist and post-socialist rural landscape. And in this sense, uh, uh, I will try to navigate in a multi-level and interlaced understanding of these uh, legacies, investigating how local communities perceive and experience uh, these spaces inherited from a very recent past and under a continuously changing uh, present. 
And finally, uh, the aim, the, the main uh, general aim of the project will be, of course, producing novel scientific contribution. And uh, in order to be also a, a, a national and international platform to discuss and place finally Albanian, the Albanian case study in the main framework of the European studies on modernist rural landscape and uh, architecture. Um, the project will be uh, developed uh, through um, a research methodology uh, that involves collection processes and uh, processing and critical interpretation of visual, oral and written uh, uh, data through the implementation of historical and architectural research, ethnograph ethnography and uh, anthropological fieldwork activities and uh, the consequent analysis and interpretation. And uh, during my field work, I will collect narratives, memories, and voices of people who experienced uh, the socialist rural modernization and uh, still live in uh, this post-socialist context. Um, however, uh, until now, I have developed uh, um, historical research and literature review about uh, these topics, especially at the National State Archive uh, in Tirana and I've started to um, research material also to the National uh, Film uh, um, Archive in Tirana and to the ethnographic and in the ethnographic archive uh, uh, at my institute. Uh, so um, until now, this consultation of published and unpublished sources, uh, which of course is still ongoing and will uh, continue during uh, the whole uh, first year of the project, uh, has been pivotal for the identification of the five macro rural areas to which um, are associated the main countryside transformation processes during the socialist regime in, in Albania. And uh, so, um, as you can see, um, this main process, uh, transformation process are the reclamation of the major marshy areas and their conversion into arable lands. Uh, the transformation of rivers into sources of hydroelectrical power and the establishment of new rural agricultural centers as focal point for the urbanization of the um, countryside. But uh, now let's um, introduce uh, uh, this webinar cycle, which is part, of course, of the project. And uh, as you already know, uh, during the 20th century in many European countries, uh, modernity seems to have been regarded chiefly as a state-based ideological and experimental project, providing uh, so in this way an opportunity for new rural landscape and architectural ideas that always were converging uh, uh, on the vision imposed by different kind of ideologies in different countries. Uh, in this context, and regardless of the nature of political ideology, um, the pre-existing rural landscape underwent reshaping processes that reflected into tangible transformations and intervention in, uh, in the territory. Uh, so these tangible traces of the past represent often remembrances of unsuccessful economic policies and lost political bets, encompassing in this way also social, cultural, anthropological and historical values and memories still impacting people who experience those transformation and still live in those territories. So the aim of this webinar um, is to bring together experts and scholars uh, uh, in the field of architecture, ethnography, visual anthropology, cultural landscape and heritage studies, and uh, through the presentation of their ongoing or already concluded research experiences, discuss how we can approach uh, the study of the 20th century uh, rurality through different methodological lenses. Uh, so um, by participating in these five webinar meetings, um, you will, uh, you will uh, virtually explore different way, uh, ways to look at in, and investigate and uh, interpret how modernity materialized in different European rural contexts. And as you can see um, in this program, um, this is uh, the first of course, of course meeting of the webinar cycle. And uh, on April 20, we will have um, 
we will have the possibility to listen to the uh, Nicola Scaldaferri and uh, Lorenzo Ferrarini uh, exploring rurality in southern Italy. So how they apply ethnomusicology and anthropology of music to uh, the southern, southern rural context of Italy. Then we will have uh, on April 22, um, Cristina Pallini and Axel Fischer um, that will present their um, research about modscapes. That was, uh, uh, again, an EU-funded project about modernist rural landscape that has been uh, concluded in 2019. And then we will ha have on um, April 29, Bosse Lagerqvist from the University of Gothenburg, and we will explore the way we can uh, conceive uh, sustainable man management of cultural landscape. And then uh, for um, concluding this uh, webinar cycle, we will listen to uh, architect Dumitru Ruso, which is the president of Baku Association, and um, which is uh, the founder, one of the founder of socialist modernism movement and uh, initiative. And, um, that we and, and we will see how um, he created uh, and put together the map uh, about former um, so socialist uh, architecture in former socialist country, Eastern countries. Um, but now um, I don't want to uh, steal more precious time to our today guests, uh, Nebi Bardoshi and Olsi Lele. So um, let me introduce them. Um, Nebi Bardoshi is an associate professor and uh, he is the director of the Institute of Cultural Anthropology and uh, Art Studies in Tirana. And uh, since, since 2015, he has been a research fellow at the Graduate School for East and Southeast European Studies in Ragesburg, in Germany. And um, his main areas of academic interest are anthropology of law, property, and the state. And he has also special uh, research interests in the history of anthropological thought, uh, especially as it relates uh, to the nexus of power and knowledge uh, in uh, Albanian um, ethnology during the communist and post-communist uh, periods. Um, he is the author of two volumes uh, in Albanian language. I will say the title uh, in English. <laughs> So the first uh, volume uh, uh, is titled uh, Border Stones, Customary Law, Property and Social Structuralization and has been published in 2011. And the second uh, uh, volume is called Anthropology of the Canon and has been published in 2015. And moreover, he is also co-author with Olsi Leilai of the volume Ethnography in, Dict in Dictatorship, Knowledge, Power and Our Holocaust, published in 2018. Uh, Olsi Lelai uh, is a researcher and anthropologist, and he is uh, head of the Department of uh, Ethnology at the Institute of Cultural Anthropology and Art Studies. Uh, his research focuses on topics uh, such as the formation and the role of the modern state, ethnographic uh, knowledge in dictatorship, modern ideologies and intellectuals, and post-communist urban uh, spaces. He is author um, of um, a volume uh, in Albanian language, uh, which is titled Under the Sign of Modernity, Anthropology of Prote Proletarialization During State Socialism in Albania. And he is also a co-author with um, Professor Bardoshi um, of the volume Ethnography in Dictatorship, Knowledge, Power and Our Holocaust. Uh, so, um, the intervention will focus uh, on the Albanian village as an anthropological encounter of modernity, observing and discussing how rural life was subjected to ethnological anthropological discourses in uh, the 20th century Albania, and in what ways uh, the modern state uh, and its modernization processes have impacted uh, the Albanian village and uh, still continue to impact uh, the, the current, the contemporaneity of the, the Albanian countryside. So now I will leave the floor to Olsi and Nebi, and uh, I will ask them to switch on their microphone and I will switch off mine. <laughs> Please. Do you hear me? Yeah, I okay. can hear you. 
Okay. Okay. So with your permission, uh, before passing the floor to Lele to present our joint paper, I will, on behalf of Institute of Cultural Anthropology and Art Studies, I would like to congratulate uh, Dr. Pompeiano <laughs> for the work done until now and make some brief remarks on MAMO project. The research project MAMO addresses very important topics for the studies related to the way modernities are materialized in practice. Particularly, it is a very important project which addresses the issue of materialization uh, of the specific case of state socialism that which took place in rural areas of Aldenia. Together with my colleague Lele, we had the pleasure to follow closely the entire process, progress of the work done by Federica. And as we have heard from her presentation, and, and we have, as we have noticed so far, this project promised tremendously much in the opening of a new research path. And we also equally believe that from this project, new ideas will emerge in both theoretically and Practically and practical knowledge. Another note I want to make is that this project has enabled the creation of an international and interinstitutional network, and I think it's very important, which I believe will transform it will be transformed into a network which will bring fruit fruitful collaboration into the future. Uh, I'm stopping here to pass the visual floor to Olse, and he will present our joint paper. And after all, uh, afterwards we can discuss some topics and issues that are related to the project and to our presentation also. And I'm really happy to 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 be together today, and hopefully in the future we will have a chance to be in the real space and not only in a virtual. Uh, uh, dimension we have because of pandemic uh, situation we are now. Thank you very much. Thank you, Navy. So I'll see. Hello. <laughs> Hi, Federica. Hi, everyone. Thank you for the nice presentation of the whole project, uh, a project that we have together put in place, but luckily you are, put, you are giving the right directions to it. And um, the presentation I'm about to read, and uh, maybe some parts also comment, uh, in a way it provides a background upon, on which uh, MAMO, but also other projects in the Institute of Cultural Anthropology are, are being articulated in the past decade. So uh, with your permission, I'll be reading my, my paper in order not to lose to, to be lost in my own translations, not yours. So, as the title indicates, this presentation aims to discuss the relation between the village and modernity in Albania. The proposition implies a two-folded perspective. On one hand, it aims to offer an analysis of the village as a modern project, and on the other, we hope that such analysis will provide us with a more reflective understanding of modernity itself. Thus, in principle, the quest in front of us is to read the layers and give answers to questions such as, in what ways and how the village became subject to, and it was transformed by social, cultural, economic, political, and intellectual processes upon which the very idea and materialization of modernity shaped Albania. Each of the concepts used in the following, such as village, modernity, transformation, ideologies, and so on, have a long intellectual history within anthropology and in, and in general within the field of social sciences and humanities. And we are well aware of the critical assessment and reflection provided to by the scholarship on each of them. However, we'll be using them as landmarks in order to frame and summarize some, uh, to summarize more than a decade long research and scholarship, which has and continues to explore the relationship 
between the village and modernity where Albanian society is the empirical ground for such reflections. In, it needs to be stated that both topics mentioned above, above are integrated in the research strategy of the Institute of Cultural Anthropology and Art Study. Currently, how modernity has impacted rural life is being explored through two ongoing major research projects. The first is the project which hosts this webinar and which seeks to understand how modernity is materialized in rural Albania, especially socialist modernity. We all are looking forward to its future intellectual outcomes and in the name of Professor Balorshi and mine, we wish all the best to Dr. Pompeiano in such quest. Whereas the second project titled Atlas Ethnographic if Shati Shitar Sot, the Ethnographic Atlas of Albanian Village Today, supported by the National Research and Innovation Agency of Albania, it has gathered eight researchers to, do, to do, document ethnographically the transformation of, of rural life, starting from the installation of communism until today in Albania. Both research projects are based on and extend a number of issues and questions critically and deeply explored in contemporary Albanian anthropology that analyze the village as a modern project. The guidelines provided so far by such scholarship read the Albanian village firstly as a project of modern intellectual thought and secondly as project of the modern state and its ideologies. What comes next summarizes critically both perspectives on the village as encounter with modernity. The following discusses the conclusion deriving from already published works by the authors of these presentations. The first encounter with modernity of Albanian village is probably when the later becomes part of intellectual projects. What we mean by that? The discovery of Albania in the 19th century onward by, by foreign and national intellectual scholars, intellectual and scholars with a high interest in philology, ethnography, history or archaeology and the published works deriving from such exploration, explorations can be viewed as a momentum where the village and the rural life become part of a wider scholarly projects posing questions related to the understanding of people's life through notions of culture, society, and other modern scientific categor categories of thought. In such context, the rural as a scholarly project is paralleled by other intellectualist movements whom articulate the modern idea of self-determination of people. The later is a pillar of modern political actions based on the, on the sanctity of rights and freedoms for the individual and or a people to choose their own destiny. In the case of a people, it implied a political destiny, possibly materialized in the modern notion of the nation state. Thus, the possibility of a people, the eventuality of a nation and the right to a state seem to have been the underlying questions through which the Albanian village was transformed into a modern intellectual project. It is within the articulation of modern intellectual viewpoints that the idea and materialization of nation states started side by side with the dissolution of the Ottoman Empire in the Balkan and the Mediterranean area. The Albanian, the Albanian village is born as a distinct entity together with the very idea of Albania as a possible nation state. In such context, within the field of anthropology, the Albanian village becomes the house of two theoretical perspectives, evolutionism and romanticism. The first perspective, evolutionism, is very much reflected in the early researches carried out on Albanian culture and society by foreign scholars. The discovery of Albanian language and cultural traditions was integrated within Indo-European family of cultures upon which the whole Albanian study field developed, uh, uh, develops, pioneered by the work of George von Hahn and others. The idea of primitivism nested in Albanian rural areas and highlands addressed in these works did not only provide an intellectual opportunity for philologists to understand the origins of a language, 
but it captured the anthropological imagination of, of adventurous ethnographers, such as Eddie Durham, to describe the origins of a lost world from the development of modernity in the West. In the first chapter of her book, High Albania, High Albania of 1909, published the year before Albania's independence, Durham invites the modern English reader by depicting rural Albania as, I open quotes, the land of the living past, where for the folks in such lands, time has almost stood still. The wonder for the, from the West stand uh, awestruck amongst them, filled with vague memories of the cradle of his race, saying, this did I do some thousand of years ago, thus did I lie in, in wait for my enemy, so thought I and so acted I in the beginning of time." End quotes. Kinship relations, blood feud, elementary forms of economic life, mythological thinking and superstitions are among the themes through which the Albanian village is depicted within such works. Besides the cultural and, such, and social di uh, dimensions, the body of villagers is taken as an example within physical anthropology to illustrate the evolution of races in Europe, in Europe as in the case of the work of Kuhn in the Mountain of Giants. The modernist discourse of evolutionism will capture the imagination of foreign anthropologists that will take the Albanian village as an example of backwardness and its people as unable to form political solidarities with outside blood relations. The case of Lois' Loi, work and others. The second theoretical perspective that develops parallel with evolutionism is romanticism. Even though it still underlines a primitivism of rural Albania, it finds in its originality and distinctiveness a cultural reality exemplified by the language. The Romanticist perspective, rooted very much in the Herderian tradition, was quickly absorbed by the National Awakening Movement of Albania and the literary tradition created around it. The exploration of the village and rural life becomes synonymous with the discovery of the soul of a collective, of a collective political identity. Documenting and describing the way of life of villagers implied for many Albanian scholars a duty for the nation which eventually needed its own state. The political movement for the, an independent Albania needed the convincing of powerful nations to acknowledge the existence of a distinct cultural and social reality of a people with rich culture reflected in political and legal traditions such as the Kanun, and whom had inhabited, inhabited the territory inherited to them from four, uh, forefathers since the time of ancient Greece, if not before. The ancient customs harbored in highland villages were a proof of that. The documentation of customary laws, legends, and way of life before and after the independence of Albania by Albanian intellectuals would provide the basis upon which national ethnology will develop after World War II. National ethnology develops with the coming to power of the Communist Party. During state socialism, Albanian ethnographers did field work all over the country. Their research work consid uh, consisted mostly in the exploration of the material and non-material tradition, traditional culture of rural communities. It is here that the village is stabilized as a proper research field. However, there were also scattered exploration of urban culture. Moreover, besides documenting the cultural traits and social patterns of rural communities, Albanian ethnographers carried out focused expedition to explore the success of socialist policies in rural areas, especially the effects of collective farms create creation in the life of peasantry. The targeted social and cultural milieu was the remote village, which was believed to safeguard the original cultural traits of the Albanians. The most researched subjects within this framework included material culture, the social organization of traditional society, customary and customary legal systems. But what was the Albanian village for national ethnology? 
Theoretically speaking, Albanian ethnography adopts and fuses elementary principles from Marxist historical materialism and fuses, uh, fuses its evolutionism with diffusionism. The scientific paradigm of interpreting ethnographic data was state-oriented. The later had declared Marxism as the only true science. Within such context, the temporal, the temporal understanding of rural culture was pivotal. The ethnographic discourse depicted the village as the locus of the nation culture, which developed through the linear evolution of modes of productions. Moreover, the discourse on culture, on, cul on culture framed by this temporal optic did not only speak about the past, but also for the present and future. A key concept, for example, used by Albanian ethnogram ethnographers to frame the temporality of a cultural practice and to classify it within the value ladder of uh, uh, and classified uh, and they classified it within the value ladder as as a mbeturin. This probably was to be considered, this probably mbeturin, I will explain what mbeturin was, uh, can be considered as the most political concept of Albanian ethnography. The term has a dual meaning, first as a remains and later as a garbage. Thus, when is used as remains, it follows pretty much Taylor's concept of cultural survivals and it nurtures the ethnographer, ethnographer's language with an understanding of cultural practices to support certain positions about past tra trajectories of cultural devel uh, development stages, for example, matriarchy. But when it, it was used to frame a cultural practice as garbage, it spoke about the present. It underlined, it underlined the ethnographer's engagement as cultural activist or as agent of the new, of the new order of the ideological vision the dicta dictatorial state projected for society. Certain cultural practices, for example, religious practices that were declared, uh, that were banished after 1967 would be falling in this category. Through this classification, the dictatorial ethnographic discourse provided data and legitimacy for state action to clean society from the cultural practices that did not fit to the new vision. Eventually, the, vid, the village was subject to it. In a wider frame, the temporal valences of cultural ph phenomena with the hierarchy of values paired with the systematic reduction of freedoms were essential to sustain the very idea of socialism as transitory or liminal phase where the state must do whatever it takes to achieve the future it promised to society. Under the label of emancipation, for example, several civilizing practices were, under, were undertaken and became part of the political economy of the state where its institutions, especially those working in the field of culture, participating participated in making the new society with new people. All state-led practices embedded in one single ideology in which Albanian ethnographer participated produced a, what we have called a holocaustic culture, which sustained the idea and practices of a godless state. This concept is drawn by Zygmunt Bauman's work on modernity and holocaust, which it mattered very, uh, were, in which time mattered very much. And eventually the changing of this and modernization processes had to be accelerated. This is one of the conclusions we have drawn from the and published in the book Ethnography under Dictatorship, the state, knowledge and our Holocaust. Thus, the village as a topic of exploration in ethnography, in ethnography, in Albanian ethnography during state socialism touches upon what we underline as a second encounter with modernity, namely the state and its modernization processes carried out in the name of given ideology. The relationship, the relation between the state and the village predates the declaration of an independent Albania, and it is extendable to Ottoman Empire period and or other forms of centralized and bureaucratically organized power, such as kingdoms, 
Also, the modernization processes introduced in the later phase of Ottoman Empire need to be considered in order to understand how modernity impacted the village before the creation of Albanian nation state. However, the timeline for an anthropology of modernity explored within our works has established the creation of the nation state as a clear momentum of great transformation for, for Albanian society, including its villages. The period between 19, uh, 1912 until the end of, war, of World War II demands further exploration in order to understand how modern ideology, ideologies shape the villages and rural communities. So far, the present scholarship has given ethnographically rich and theoretically stimulating works focusing on how socialism and post-socialism have changed rural communities in Albania. We'll focus on the question of collective farms, Cooperativa Guisora during communism, and the decollectivization of land after the fall of communism as the two main topics through which the impact of the ideologies and the state, together with modernization process, processes, shape the Albanian village. Socialism and neoliberalism, as state ideologies, are explored in the way how they transform people's life in the village. Thus, the village during state socialism is, is transformed into a site of proletarization due to the creation of collective agricultural cooperatives and state, estate, and state farms. While the former was formed in principle by the unification based on, I'm quoting, uh, I'm open brackets, free concept of peasant land and animal property together with other means of production, the later, basically the state farms, were exclusively state property. Uh, the history of the, collective, uh, of the collective agricultural farm formation in the course of state socialism it's, uh, in Albania reveals how Albanian pro, uh, peasantry was transformed gradually in, uh, in time, initially into peasant workers and subsequently into a full wage dependent worker. The mechanisms of this process vary from changing of the legal system to the urbanization of, of uh, rural areas, to the monetization of the economy, uh, monetization of the economy, to the introdu introduction of uh, pedagogical activities in schools, and, and many more. The following conclusion have been published in the monograph under the sign of modernity, which Federica presented. And Precisely, precisely saw this uh, process of modernization and it and it's uh, what happened after. W what followed with the fall of communism and uh, uh, introduced the village into a new form, uh, uh, into a new context, and into a new gaze of uh, post-socialism. Thus, in the years 1991 and 1992 marked for Albania the beginning of a great transformation in every aspect of social life. The Albanian population faced a deep identity crisis. The whole system of values built upon the course of four, 45 years of dictatorships have been overthrown. The, Albani the Albanian village faced the process of decollectivization of property. The legal basis for the process became the law for land uh, on land of the year 1991 that recognized the peasant family as an economic unit. The amount of land that a family received uh, from the agricultural cooperative depended on the number of the family members. The system of distribution was known as Daria Tokus for Frim, division of, of land per head or per capita. The law was explicit in its non-recognition of, of specific claims to previous forms of ownership prior to collectivization. And eventually, the work of Bardoshi has focused precisely in the way how the process of decollectivization happened in the Albanian countryside. He has shown throughout his work and focus on the dynamics of, uh, of uh, uh, 
how the, this law was applied in practice. Field data suggests the role played by customary rules canon in providing a moral in meaningful redistribution of land, especially in the context when the state fails to meet people's idea and ideals on the meaning of justice. This discrepancy between morality, justified legal actions in post-socialism, observed in detailed uh, ethnographic accounts in the work uh, mentioned ahead, Gurta Kufini, articulates a broader problematic as, uh, that uh, post-socialism faces in Albania, especially in the way how rural communities affronted post-socialist changes. These questions are among the wish uh, and conclusion are among the wish issues that uh, have helped us to construct an, uh, uh, not only an ethnographically empirically uh, tuned works, but eventually project uh, uh, conclusions for future research. And uh, to this aspect, we have uh, both projects that uh, were presented, MAMO on one hand and the Ethnographic Atlas on the other, are, are exploring further the number of issues that have been uh, proposed in, in these works on the Albanian village uh, so far. So uh, I'm leaving it uh, here, my presentation, in order to give some more space to discussions and questions uh, in this webinar. Thank you very much. Thank you, Alsi. Thank you for your presentation. And um, yes, uh, actually, uh, what it is interesting, it is uh, exactly this, I mean, how how can we how can we address these uh, legacies uh, nowadays? How can we uh, we deal? How can how can we deal with the with the, uh, the traces of uh, of these uh, modernization processes? And um, yeah, uh, I think that both uh, the project that we are uh, uh, unfolding and uh, carry out uh, at the institute will uh, will be able. Uh, to at least to, to locate and uh, to give uh, uh, more information about uh, about Albania, because uh, as uh, I have already mentioned uh, at the beginning when I was introducing this webinar um, cycle, uh, at the European level, uh, many many studies exist about uh, um, modernization processes uh, in. Uh, um, in a former socialist or at least, I mean, uh, countries that experience a uh, dictatorship uh, in the past. But uh, uh, always uh, uh, we lack about uh, uh, international studies uh, about Albania. And th this, is, uh, 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 this is a little bit nonsense because actually Albania um, had, a, had a really uh, particular uh, experience uh, uh, in relation to the experience uh, of other countries, or for instance, in the in the um, former Eastern Bloc, and uh, so well, let's see if there are some questions or not in our chat. No, <laughs> I think <laughs> no one. Okay, maybe. Okay, we have we have Anissa. Okay, Anissa. Yes. Thank you. Uh... Yeah, thank you Kim, for allowing me to ask a question, but most of all for organizing this today. And uh, thank you for the presentation as well. Um, I was wondering, because I heard you uh, mention the Kanun a couple of times. And uh, as far as my knowledge is concerned, that's concentrated in the North. And then I was wondering on what are, what are your findings on the main differences between the South and the North in Albania, because they came from a different historical, let's say, social structure, and then they went through the same thing, and then how has that been reflected uh, further on? Yeah, thank you. Okay, who takes this, Olsi or Nebi? Olsi. Olsi, okay. Go ahead, Nebi. <laughs> okay. Uh, of course, there are differences, and we had I mean, I have done some research on and comparative research on this issue. 
and I think this uh, new project that is uh, taking place now, Atlas Ethnographic, is bringing more uh, information on this, on this, uh, I mean, more possibilities to compare between different practices that had taken place during the decollectivization process. Uh, generally speaking, I mean, I can say that uh, the map of Kanun or this practice of sharing the property based on tradition and not just on state law, it's a, a, it's a bit wider rather than, I mean, than map of Kanun or north of Albania. There are, for instance, in south of Albania, in, uh, let's say, on, on, on some uh, highlands or in villages where Kanun of uh, Idrisulia was a, a tradition before, in Labria, for instance, there are combination between state law and, uh, and local tradition, let's say, customary law in, in local level which means that the people have combined, for instance, they had used the formula of the state law by sharing the property based on principle per capita, but they prefer to share, to, uh, to take the land uh, in that space that, that they had considered the land of, uh, of father or of uh, grandfather based on the customary uh, tradition. So the border of the, of the land that they had profit from the commission that had uh, uh, done the procedure of sharing the property of the former cooperatives, they had preferred to took the land from, uh, from this uh, part of the, that they, according to the social memory that belongs to their father or to the, to the grandfather. This is one of the formula they used, but not all the time because that there is, a lot of details that we should share together. For instance, that the different practices on sharing the forest, and also different practices of sharing the um, of sharing the, the 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 forest that was transformed into the uh, into the agricultural land. So they had used different uh, practices, and also in the village, in rural area, the practice of seizing the land of the former uh, collective land or the cooperative land or state farm land or properties was a, was is a fact so the concept that we have used in the, in analyzing this process is a legal pluralism but sometimes is 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 beyond legal plurality because there's a plurality of practices that that had had taken place in different uh, area but when we come to lowlands, people, most of the cases, they had applied the state law, but also new cases show that that was not all the time. For instance, the, the, the last research we have done in Rada, the village, which is close nearby Tirana, 40% uh, of the people that we have interviewed, uh, approximately, let's say, they declared that they had... Uh, they shared the property based on law, and other people told us that they had preferred to take the land that they believe that they have inherited based on the tradition. Therefore, it's a very complex issue, and we have I, I hope that in the in the in, at the end of this project of Atlas Ethnographic, we will have also the kind of map that will show that this plurality of practice based on, uh, in, uh, probably not in the whole of Albania, but on these villages that we have doing the field work for sure. I'm not sure if I have responded to your questions, but I tried to summarize because somehow, I, I mean, between what I have published before and what I'm doing now, so. Yes, yes, uh, very interesting, thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, Probably Olsi has something to add on this. Hello. Um, could I ask a question also? Yes, Rosie. 
please. Hi, Fede. Hi. Hi, Rosie. Hello to all colleagues. Hi from Sofia, Bulgaria. I'm listening with a great interest because uh, the situation in Bulgaria with the land uh, ownership, land property, and land uh, maintenance is uh, pretty much uh, common. Uh, I mean, uh, the legacy from the 20th century. Um, so my question is, uh, do you intend to, to make some um, parallels, some um, analogies between the countries, uh, maybe in the in the Balkan countries, and um, perhaps uh, there, are, of course, a local particularities. Um, but still, the the whole, the total picture maybe is uh, approximately very uh, similar. And my second question is uh, whether this research uh, is focused on um, the survey of land property and la land maintenance, whether it will uh, become a um, survey of uh, maybe perhaps uh, um, spatial planning or architectural aspects or it's limited only on this particular subject. Thank you very much. Thank you, Rosie. Uh, well, I'm uh, going to answer uh, about my project, about MAMO. Um, okay, in my case, uh, uh, the point is to understand, uh, okay, I have identified these five macro areas as I uh, showed uh, before and uh, uh, these areas uh, are like are related to a different uh, um, transformation process that uh, the regime uh, um, carried out uh, on uh, on uh, that uh, territories. Um, so uh, I will adopt different kind of uh, methodologies in uh, investigating the different uh, macro areas because at the beginning I was I was hoping to um, collect a lot of, uh, uh, for instance, uh, historical orthophotos or something like that, that could have been useful in, a, in a, how do you say, in, a, in studying the, the transformation of the landscape. Because, you know, uh, I'm going to, to use the um, geographic information system in a way. So um, they, the first idea was just to collect a lot of uh, orthophotos from the 50s uh, and also before the regime, but then it was a little bit difficult uh, dealing with this kind of materials in Albania. So uh, now I'm going to try to bend the GIS possibilities uh, in, uh, um, uh, by using qualitative and not quantitative uh, data. So in the end, I will try to, to to understand this transformation by using more uh, um, qualitative data that will, will, will be gained uh, during the field work that I will going to, uh, uh, to carry out uh, uh, during uh, uh, June and July and maybe also August and then also in the autumn. I mean, I have four months uh, uh, field work uh, activities to, to implement. Uh, so in uh, in my case, uh, uh, the idea is really to uh, investigate uh, what have been implemented. Firstly, uh, by, by collecting the historic resources and uh, by analyzing the literature, I will collect and I will, I will understand what has been planned by the regime. So, uh, for instance, uh, in the countryside, uh, um, they, um, they planned a lot of uh, uh, master plan for the new villages, for the new settlements. But then when you just look now uh, in, on Google Maps, for instance, you can clearly see that they, they didn't implement everything they, they already planned. So first of all is, uh, in my case, I will try to understand what they planned, what they, what, what they wanted to, to, to realize what in, in, this, in this sense, how, 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 how they, they will uh, uh, materialize literally um, uh, the, um, the modernity uh, through urban and architectural planning. And then uh, I, I will go um, on site, but not as an engineer or an architect as, as I am, but I will try to, um, to, pawn, to put on the lenses of uh, a sort of uh, <laughs> 
uh, early anthropologists, and they will try to investigate uh, uh, the contemporaneity, I mean, the, the present of these villages. So what remains? What remains and what kind of uh, transformation the post-socialist uh, um, period uh, has, um, has brought to, to, to these uh, sites? And so again, I will try to collect uh, um, um, like patterns or uh, uh, experiences or narratives of people that are, are, in, are living in those uh, territories. And so in, in my case, uh, the project will we, we, try to, to bridge the past to the present and vice versa in this sense. And um, of course, uh, the main frame, the idea is also to, to put uh, Albania, to place Albania in the main framework of the studies already carried out uh, until now uh, um, about modernist rural landscape and modernist architecture, because uh, I, will, uh, um, I will type uh, uh, later in, the, in our chat, uh, there, uh, there, is, uh, there has been this project, uh, which is called uh, uh, modscapes and uh, it was a, a, a new funded project. It was a really super interesting project because uh, it involved also um, more than uh, 40 researchers from different countries, European countries. And um, in a way, MAMO built up uh, on um, modscape uh, uh, fundings uh, because, um, because actually they pictured the uh, uh, the Italian dictatorship, uh, um, they pictured the, uh, the, the East Germany uh, um, agricultural cooperatives, they pictured the Estonian, they pictured a lot of other uh, case studies, but uh, in this main framework, Albania, again, is not studied. So the idea is more or less to, to try to put in place uh, the Albanian case study in the, in the European framework about uh, about modernist rural landscape architecture, but not only in uh, in the in the strict and uh, uh, straightforward way, uh, architectural way or urban planning way, but try to mix anthropology, architecture, landscape studies, cultural heritage studies also, because then we have also to deal with uh, what uh, we think that we have at the academic level. I mean, we, we are so like, um, uh, I mean, for, for, for someone that is, um, is dealing with uh, architecture and uh, uh, history of architecture or history of landscape, uh, uh, for us, the past is always like a heritage, you know, <laughs> in a yeah. way. We look with the eyes of uh, a conservation architect or a conservation uh, uh, engineer or something like that, but for one, for the ones that are living uh, there, these these places, maybe it, it is it is difficult to conceive uh, uh, the socialist uh, legacies as heritage. You know, so there is also this kind of dissonant heritage in a way. So I don't know if I have replied to your questions by mixing a lot of things together. Yeah, thanks. Uh, it was a very, how to say, very full explanation. I think that this uh, kind of uh, sorrowful study with uh, all these uh, glimpses from um, different uh, f um, scientific fields is very, very valuable, but uh, especially the linking with uh, guest system with this uh, special, how to say, historical traces, uh, because uh, from uh, my my angle, my scientific angle, which includes Ottoman studies, I think that um, uh, the efforts now are too late and uh, uh, very, very, very difficult to restore uh, the map of uh, the land according to the property from the Ottoman times. So this is the right time to do it and to preserve it or, uh, as a heritage, although this process for educating the, the wider public that this heritage is uh, important because this is something that happened and uh, nonetheless uh, so somebody could be ashamed, somebody could uh, just uh, um, have prejudices, but still there a very important uh, part that should be rec recorded, uh, of course, uh, researched and uh, 
estimated, evaluated what what ha, what uh, what to be preserved eventually. So I think that this is process uh, in the right time, in the right uh, direction, and I hope to to be a witness of uh, the results and to have the chance to discuss it. Thank oh. you, Rosie. Yes, I agree. I mean, uh, this is this is exactly the point because uh, this is like a very recent past, but in the, in, in the same way and uh, the, the present and I mean, the time, we cannot stop time and we cannot stop, of course, transformations and we cannot stop uh, simply the time. So uh, some, some, sometimes in, uh, in some uh, uh, special condition, the only way to save something also just to, to, to to be also like to save like a, a, as, a, as a potential knowledge for future is to, to document, you know, so to going uh, on field work activities and document what we have. So, um, yeah, this is as also my professor maybe and also said, uh, this is a first step and uh, uh, and um, as much I dig in these topics, uh, in, of course, in my case studies in Albania, uh, a, a lot. I mean, I, I'm I'm really uh, like opening a Pandora vase, you know, because there are so many um, interlaced knowledge level that we have to reach in, in this uh, in these uh, studies, and uh, it is important just to you know take the first step. I don't know if maybe an OC want to add something about a plus ethnographic in this sense or. No, uh, in principle, our work has aimed and has been to, to be comparative always. So trying to draw data uh, from other published work uh, for the region, the Balkans, the Mediterranean, Europe, uh, Far East, uh, uh, South uh, Latin America, because that's what the logic of anthropology is, you know, a comparative perspective in seeing, uh, in comparing and contrasting to coming to conclusions. So in this case, uh, Albania becomes, uh, as I said uh, also in the paper, it is the place where we draw empirical data. Uh, but eventually our conclusion and reflections go beyond the, the country. They don't speak only for Albania, but we try to make statements and reflections that uh, include also other places with a similar uh, uh, trajectory. Uh, the, the same goes with uh, Atlassi Ethnographic. Uh, right now we are collecting data uh, on, on, for, for di different areas. Each of the researchers uh, involved in, in, in this project um, has its own field of spe specialization, let's say, in a narrow sense. But on the other hand, uh, we are also gathering data for to open also our new, new perspective in, in our work. So we, uh, from the data we are gathering include from the past to the present. It try to, to document the, the transition period. Uh, the life under socialism, the life uh, uh, in, in, in during transition and in the contemporary, the economic life, political life, religious life of uh, of the past, of the of the villages under scrutiny as well, including the investments coming from different uh, actors uh, participating. Eventually, after. Uh, these data have been gathered and eventually the empirical ground is there. We, uh, a comparative perspective will be endorsed immediately in a way. There are, there are a number of studies uh, about uh, the contemporary of the Bulgarian village, for example. There is a, an edited volume by Gerd Jusin, the latest one, for example. Uh, that uh, would come in hand to compare the, the, our data with uh, pro similar processes. Uh, in Bulgaria, for example, but not only. So that's the aim of our work at the end of the day. Whether it's, it, it, it will, it's going to be applicable, that was uh, also a question. Um, that, that's something that um, our work is highly critical sometimes, and, um, it, and not many people who read it are at ease, especially planners. 
uh, who try, who do find it sometimes difficult uh, to impose certain perspective and but uh, eventually uh, uh, what we will produce will enable them to, to, to be more attuned and to, be, to, to listen uh, uh, much closer to the people and maybe to have a more com conversative, a more dialogical uh, relationship with them in, in order how to plan, let's say, a meaningful environment, for example. That's, uh, that's it. Okay, thank you, Alsi. I hope, Rosie, you obtain your uh, answer or the answer that you decide. And um, okay, so I don't know, we don't have any other question. Um, so we are super in time, actually. So, <laughs> which is okay because it is a webinar and you know. It is better to finish early than uh, later. So um, I would like to thank uh, again Olsi and Nebi for their presentation. And uh, I would like to thank you all for participating in this webinar. I knew a lot of uh, you <laughs> that are attending and uh, this is so nice. And uh, I'm happy also to see uh, people that I, I've never met, but uh, I hope I will meet uh, uh, in the future. And uh, so let's see um, if I meet you again on uh, April 20 uh, during the presentation about sonic ethnography that will be held by um, Professor Nicola Scaldaferri and Lorenzo Ferrarini and they are both anthropologists and ethnomusicologists and uh, they will try to explore reality in a, another uh, in another way applying another methodology and uh, through sounds so um, see you on april 20 and uh, thank you to all of you thank you for have the a nice evening bye bye have a good evening everyone bye bye